We've all trained for a rapid depressurization event, but what about that more common insidious loss of pressurization? Let's take a look how this might happen. Well, we should be home in about a couple of hours. Weather's good. Going through 18, we're at 2292. And we're good. Heading low, we're getting the vectors. Station 396 Delta Mike, continue the climb, climb and maintain flight level 290. Okay, uh, 290 for 396 Delta Mike. Okay, we have an altitude light. There's a red light. Cabin altitude A3. A Citation 396 Delta Mike, uh, traffic 12 o'clock, turn left heading 270, when able direct uh, JFK. Left uh, 270, looking for the traffic, 396 Delta Mike and direct JFK when able. Okay, direct JFK, activate, all right, now, now, and we got that red light on. Okay, cabin altitude, uh, cast message indicates cabin altitude greater than approximately 9,500 feet or may cabin, no, ca cast message indicates cabin altitude greater than pro approximately 9,500 feet or cabin, okay, okay, uh, non oxygen, oxygen control valve, drop, pack safety, air, Air <laughs> Air source. Air, <laughs> Air source select when she'll be there. Citation 396 Delta Mike. Contact New York approach. 12597. 197. When Citation 96 Delta Mike contact New York approach 12597. 195 190 New York New York approach. You read six. Citation 396 Delta Mike, are you needing an assistance? Six. Citation 5 Delta Mike respond. That situation may seem improbable with David compounding an existing failure, but that exact scenario has played out over and over in turbine aircraft. In one transport category aircraft, three out of the four occupants of the flight deck lost consciousness entirely due to mismanagement of the pressurization system. No mechanical faults whatsoever. Let's take a look at the individual pieces that went wrong. Number one, preventing a situation like this happens on the ground. The air source select switch, when it is in the both position, is 12 o'clock. When it is in the off position, is at 6 o'clock. Taking a very fast look at the switch might not be enough to ensure it is where you want it to be. We know at least one CJP member has had this exact scenario unfold for him. Number two, when presented with an in-flight emergency, it's no time to improvise. The M2, just like all of the citations we fly, directs the pilot via a memory item to put on their oxygen mask as the number one first step from memory when presented with a cabin altitude warning. Many pilots faced with the depressurization have a first instinct to troubleshoot the problem. What's wrong with the system? Did I do something to contribute to this? The first step needs to be to execute the memory items. Number three, we've all heard the phrase, aviate, navigate, communicate. David was given heading changes, course changes, altitude changes, frequency changes. Those became his priority. His priority was to fly the airplane, complete the memory items first, and then get the airplane to a safe altitude faced with the depressurization. Always take care of the problem first. ATC can wait. Finally, not every depressurization event requires an emergency descent. I myself had a plane failing to pressurize climbing through 12,000 feet. In that case, simply leveling the aircraft off is appropriate, but David continued his climb faced with a depressurizing cabin.
Let's step back into the airplane climbing through 15,000 feet and see how that scenario could have been better handled. Altitude. Faced with the cabin altitude. My memory cabin items. Altitude. My mask is coming 396 on. Delta Mike, continue the climb. Climb and maintain. Flight level 290. My oxygen mask is on. Instead of an emergency descent, I'm just going to level the airplane off here at 16,000 feet. If I don't have any passengers, then my memory items are complete. I'm going to ignore that ATC clearance for a minute. In a second, I'll get back to them and I'll tell them I'm declaring an emergency and I need to stay present heading. Stay at about 16,000 feet. Solving the issue is more important though. On my checklist, I'm going to confirm I've done my memory items. And then I'm going to deliberately take the actions as spelled out in the emergency procedure. Remember, during an emergency is no time to improvise. Follow the memory items, follow the checklist. In the case of a cabin altitude, get the mask on immediately. That doesn't matter at 10,000 feet or 40,000 feet. Get the mask on, complete the memory items, follow the checklist. Thanks, Neil. That's great safety advice. Be sure to go to the safety tab on cetaceanjetpilots.com for free safety information. Till next time, safe flying.